Disclaimer. We are two regular guys who love to talk Bone Thugs and Harmony. We do not represent Bone Thugs or any Bone affiliate. We are also not Bone Thugs experts. The views and information you hear in this podcast may be based on personal opinion. Please feel free to leave corrections and clarifying information in the comments. And enjoy. Straight off the motherfucking internet. Two true hosts talking about the double Glock. Cecil. Johnny. Kick that shit, Phoenix. Beyond the harmony for the fans, we celebrate. All good in the videos, if it does stay, so join us. Beyond the harmony for the fans, we celebrate. All good in the videos, if it does stay, so join us. Beyond the harmony for the fans, we celebrate. All good in the videos, if it does stay, so join us. Yo, it's Beyond the Harmony. We are back with you once again. Cecil West. John Lippy. And it's interview time tonight, and I am personally excited as fuck tonight. This is this is one I've wanted for a long time. It's it's Julio Costanzo. And if it, you don't know that name, then you just don't know how important this guy is to some of this artwork that that we look at he's done some of the most recognizable uh albums and singles that that we know as bone fans so we're gonna have him on here in in just a few minutes um but before we do that of course me and john are gonna chop it up talk the shit what's what's up lippy what's going on i'm fired up too for this interview this will be our second artist so far that we're interviewing and this one goes way back and the art i think as i've said in past episodes the art is a big part of bone fandom so yeah. and and this particular one that we're getting to speak to i'm hoping tonight that we get to have closure on long-standing questions that have always been out there rumors and uh and just gain a, a, a grander perspective of the process of how some of these uh decisions got made and whatnot and I, i'm yeah. i'm just fired up to see what we got tonight yeah no i i think it's going to be good um you know the the other thing is is that a, a lot of the guys that did art for bone you know they, they're they outsourced from from companies and things like that uh julio was was actually like the the head of like ruthless art uh something something to that effect i got i gotta ask him what his official title with ruthless was but he but he worked for ruthless records uh and just looking here it looks like he was the art director for ruthless records so i mean this was this is more than just an outsourced guy i mean and and he's done a lot more than bone you know he did the last fucking easy e album cover wow yeah man that's it's far out so a lot of new things have been taking place with Beyond the Harmony. We've been expanding our offerings. Uh, we recently added a Mo Monday. I think that's pretty hot stuff. What, what do you got to tell me about this Mo Monday that we got going? So I did a nine-hour interview with Romeo Antonio. Me, me and John did about, f- what, four or five hours together? Yeah, I tapped out at five hours. And then me and Romeo went to eight hours and like 47 minutes. That's incredible. So, yeah, it, it's crazy. It's it's wild. Um, it, it was so wild that there's so much shit to cover. And what what's wild is you would think in like nine fucking hours that, you know, you had a bunch of bullshit. You don't. There's just so much good stuff that, like, now I'm in this, like, place of, well, I don't want any of the best stuff to get lost. So we created Mo Monday so that, really, uh, I could put out the best of the best Romeo. Uh, we still plan to release, you know, Romeo in, in our segments as well. Um, but there's some of it that's just so fucking good that we, we had to just be able to put those segments out as well. So... Mo Monday has been created, and and Romeo's probably going to control the Mo Monday spot for a long time. But uh, 
once once he's out, you know, we'll we'll use other any anything that's like home run, uh, you know, should should just be heard on its own. Ro- Romeo had so much quotable shit that I was like, man, I don't want this to get lost in a nine hour interview. I need yeah. to make sure people hear it. And you know, I didn't get an opportunity. Usually, we have like a post game wrap up, and, but because it ran nearly nine hours, I didn't get to put any finalizing touches on it. But that was a spectacular interview. Um, I don't know how many Mo Mondays will have come out by the time you hear this particular interview, but uh, you guys definitely, if you're not checking out these Mo Mondays with Romeo Antonio, he he is substantial. Like his story is, it was mind blowing. That's it kept me. Uh, it kept my attention for five straight hours. I had to go to bed because I had to go to work the next day. But uh, those five hours, I would have stayed up all night had I not have to go to work. Romeo gave us gem after gem after gem, and it was super engaging. So definitely be on the lookout for these Mo Mondays with Romeo Antonio. Yeah. I had a lot of fun talking to Romeo. He, he's a really intelligent guy. He's been around Bone for an extremely long time. Um very knowledgeable on the sound and, and just the business and, you know, the Mo Thugs. I like to know about Mo Thugs. So there's a lot of great stuff. I mean, we we didn't even kind of scratch the surface in these. There's there's two Mo Mondays out as of this recording right now, and we didn't even kind of scratch the fucking surface. And, and so. what's crazy, it seemed that even after nine hours, there still is like literally another nine-hour story Romeo could possibly tell us. So... Uh, I, way in the future, once we get all this material out, we may have a, a second engagement. You you find that's the case with everybody. You know what I mean? Like, we did three hours with K Chill, and, and I still ask K Chill questions all the time. I'm finding out new shit all the time. We'll have a follow up with K Chill. Um, you just find that. Even Shutterboy. We did like around an hour with Shutterboy, and, and you know, I've talked to him a bunch since, and, and there's a bunch more to talk about. So you always find there's more stuff to talk about, but. Yeah, Romeo could probably do another nine, ten hours. No, no yeah. problem. And he's then about, uh, we've, he's, he's about to tour with Lazy Bone again, so you know he'll he'll be able to do another nine hours after that for sure. Well, that's right. Yeah, if anybody happens to be at any of those shows that Romeo's doing with Lazy Bone, um, send us links to the footage that you capture because we definitely like to see what it's like the reunion. Yeah, I might I might have to try to book one of those dates. Yeah, if they come out east. Yeah. So we've added another section. In addition to Mo Monday, we've also added questions of the day. And this this is going to be a, a very exciting new segment that we've added to the show that we hope to drive a lot of fan interaction and just have a group conversation with it. Hey, before we even talk about question of the day, though, because I know Julio is going to call in. Can Can we just say shout out to Phoenix Rising on the on the okay. brand new Beyond the Harmony theme? That theme has it's, has it's it's given a new whole excitement to the show. I love hearing it every single time I hear it. I'm looking forward it to hearing it. Made us official, Phoenix. It made, made yeah, it official. made us so official. Yeah. Yes, you you changed the game, Phoenix. Uh and and when me and John talked about who do we get to do the theme, it was like, you know, everybody's on on the table. You know, it's like we 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 have connects to busy if we wanted to try to go that far to get busy to do it we could we could have reached out to mo thugs we could have reached out to a lot of people but man john was like have you heard phoenix rising he sent me these links and i was just like it is so dope to hear this girl that completely just like understands what this is supposed to sound like some some people just hear the bone shit and understand how to translate it whether it's doing a cover or it's playing it on an instrument. Some people just understand the translation. And I was blown away. And I immediately was like, bro, yes, she's one of us. And uh, I wasn't even sure if she was going to do it, bro. And and just one day she was like, all right, so I'm going to do that for you guys. And dude, so good. Yeah. And hopefully everybody knows who Phoenix Rising is. If not... Go to her channel, but make sure you have a lot of time to spare because I guarantee you, you watch one video, you're going to have to see another and another and another. I, I lost like two hours each each time I, I dare go to her channel. It's like a two hour loss of my night because you just want to see what she, she does next. And she does it so fluidly. She's playing the guitar or the piano and then busting perfect with the nuances 
of Crazy Bone and, and all of them, it's it's mind blowing. If you've you've seen lots of Bone clone f- fans on the net, you know, in, impersonate uh, Bone, but man, Phoenix just does it in a way that's that I haven't seen duplicated except by Bone themselves. So much respect yeah. to Phoenix Rising, and thank you so so much for giving us a perfect intro for our show. Yeah, it, it was a great job. I just. I'm blown away every time, and, and and you see, I've been using it everywhere. I got like three different versions that that we use. So, Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix is awesome. Her link is in the description. So if you're listening, just check out the description. I put her link in in all the descriptions. She's a BTH affiliate. So check out Phoenix Rising. Um, the question of the day, question of the day, brand new segment. We're basically trying to drop the question of the day. Any day where we're not doing other content. So if if we're doing some other content that day, we you know we're not going to do the question of the day. But if we're if if it's an open day, we're gonna at least try to give you something. And I think they're dope. We're we're starting them off easy, just so you know. There's some hard ones coming. Yeah, and and it's and a lot of the responses we get, uh, Cecil and I wind up having combos and debates <laughs> based on perspectives that we hear. You know, we presented favorite albums, favorite solo albums, and there's been a wide variety of different perspectives on it. You know, some are the same and then others are, you know, surprises. So uh, we definitely... Some are, we're, you know, it. some are super surprising. Like, I, you know, I expect, like, when you say, hey, what's your favorite album? That there's a big, there's a big mix of people to go resurrect, or uh, fucking Eternal, um, Art of War, Creepin'. But then when someone's like, oh, my favorite is Resurrection or the best album ever is fucking Thug World Order. I'm just like, wow, we're really different as fucking fans. And I mean, that's cool. Like, I'm not even mad at that. I'm I'm glad that there's people that those are their favorites because automatically I'm just like everybody's favorites in the in those first three motherfucker. Uh, everybody's favorite solos in those first three that came out motherfucker like that. That's just what it is. Um but it's not though, and and I think it's great, and I think that's why the question of the day is going to be great because it's giving everybody input, and that's what me and John want. We've been talking about doing a live show soon uh, as well, so you guys can actually call in because I, I would love to just talk to some people. Yeah, it, and also the perspectives that we get, it's it's so hard as original Bone fans from the beginning to comprehend what it must be like to have started listening to Bone midway through their career three quarters through their career, like all the younger bone fans that came on from strength and loyalty and, and even thug world order. It's, it's so intriguing to experience it from different eyes. So I I do enjoy it. If you were a young cat, think about it. When strength and loyalty came out, like if, if you were just old enough where like, you know, you were getting into that shit, then like I tried, I, I, I literally have had people tell me like younger people, that they thought I tried was like the first, that was like the first bone shit that they had heard. And I'm like, I wonder if they ever go back to listen to the old shit or if it's just considered too old so they don't go listen to it. And it's like, nah, I know, you know, I tried and shit. And it's like, well, do you know Down 71? Hmm. Uh, And and I think as bone fans, they probably do. But like, that's me thinking of hardcore bone fans. There's, There's some casual fans out there that may have never heard anything with strength and loyalty or or maybe unified yeah. you imagine if you heard strength and loyalty and then the next thing you heard was unified <laughs> and, and and not the prior ones yeah i don't it's it's like the star wars question you know what order do you watch the movies in now now that the prequels have been out the originals and now they're on a new series and it's like if you were to introduce bone to to your girl to your new girlfriend or to a new friend of yours that you guys share an interest in music you know, where do you start them? It, it's, I don't know. Do you start them from the beginning? Because they may not want to hear Faces of Death, right? Yeah, but, there's a weird line it, there because some of that yeah. shit just sounds like old rap music now. Like, I love it, but, you know, to, to just the casual listener, if, it, if they don't, if they'd never listen to Bone, it's like, do you, do you play them thuggish, ruggish Bone? Because that's some old hip hop sounding shit at this point. Yeah, and you know what's what's interesting too, and I've done this myself was if you listen to the newer albums like Unify or New Waves, it's like the recording quality 
that exists now in present day exceeded the recording quality that existed back then. And they recorded at great studios in 95, but the technology has advanced. And so there's, there's a drop off. If your ear gets, gets tuned to hearing the Unified and the new waves era engineering, and then you try to go back and listen to eternal, it's like, wow, it, 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 it sounds like lower, like the, the recording levels aren't as high as the new albums. And it's, it's intriguing because at the time you thought, man, this eternal album is the greatest sounding thing I've ever heard. But then when you compare it to the new technologies, it's like, wow, someone needs to remaster and re-engineer eternal for like a 25 year, uh, anniversary thing. Yeah. It, you know, it, my, I'm, I'm kind of split on the, the decision because sometimes some of the old shit, like the way it was recorded, you know, and, and this comes from us working in the studio. Um, but, but sometimes some of that old equipment just gives a certain sound that, that is unique for that time period. Uh, almost like today's records are too clean. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, I, I, I'm split. Sometimes I hear remastered shit and I'm just like, ah, reminds me of like my dad complaining when they turned like a Western that was black and white in the color. Uh, <laughs> you, I guess, I guess what I'm thinking more on the tip is like, if you're, if you're using headphones and you're using streaming services and you're just going back and forth playing around, that, oh, that's the streaming where the services are the worst. Like, you know, ah. you you know, I mean, it depends. I guess, I guess, title or whatever. Um, but, but some of the streaming stuff is the worst. I do believe we just had Julio get in here. Let me. What's up? How's it going, Julio? You with us? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you, brother. It's good yes, to have sir. you. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. Good, good. We're uh, talking. I've been, I've been harassing Julio on and off now for couple couple weeks i like i did what i do with everybody and i i find his name in the credits and then i like have to stalk this guy down on the internet till i find him and uh we got him on here but i'm i'm really pumped to have you on i'm like an art guy so like even more than the music uh i'm always down to to interview a lot of the artists and your situation is is one of the most unique to me because you were there uh so early on um, to be part of Ruthless, that's huge. So we're we're honored to have you on. Um, Thank you. I, I do want I I do want to just you know start you out with some real um you know just non bone stuff because I I I guess I gotta know um first like how you've been doing this for so long you're still active doing this now right? Yeah yeah I'm still a designer I'm still designing music not as much music as as then but I've been designing since. I graduated with a degree in painting in 91 then went to work for Motown shortly afterwards. So I went to Motown and worked on the Boys to Men project and um, worked for Michael Bivens and what else? Uh, yeah, those are, the, those are the highlights anyway. When, when you were... When you were leaving school, I mean, was that was that what you did you did you want to get into working in music or were you trying to be in like a different field and like music just happened? Like what brought you to doing album covers? And It was way back in 1991. You know, if you knew art and so I silk screened in college and I thought I got to learn computers, you know, because that's that's the way to do it. So I got a job at a pre press place which that doesn't even exist anymore. But so I knew the computer and I knew art and Jonathan Clark, who was the art director at Motown at the time, uh, was my client. And I said, I want to come work for you. And he said, well, you know, you're an artist and you know the computer, so be a graphic designer. And that's how you became a graphic designer 25 years ago. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, <clears throat> how how did you get, what, what brought you to Ruthless? Because you actually worked for Ruthless Records, correct? Right. Well, at Motown, everyone was at, so way back then, 1991, I mean, I, I mean, it's cool now having worked for, you know, Boys the Men and all that, but I was, I was not into that. I mean, I was into rock and roll back then, but everyone was into NWA. Everyone was into EZ and, and I yeah. met everyone back then. I met Tamika, Tamika Woods, uh, worked there. 
Jason Winborn, Chad Williams, Donald Cunningham, Lisa Collins, Lucky Natana. That's that's all who became ruthless. Um, so I met I met everybody. I mean I I met uh, Eric back then too because he used to come see Tamika. So then I left Ruthless. I worked in rock and roll, and then um, they called me and asked me if I wanted to work on Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like man, two weeks before Eric died, um, wow. I got hired by I got hired by Ruthless, and um, I thought they I was thought they were full of full of shit, you know, work on Bone Thugs and Harmony. I was like, sure, I'll work on Bone Thugs. I mean, Bone was huge back then. That was after their first two hits. So I right. thought they were full of shit. I was like, yeah, work for Easy for Bone Thugs and Harmony. You got it. Sure. And um, and then I saw on the news when Eric died. I was like, wow, there goes my job. Um, so we designed all that stuff. The, the uh, We designed East 1999, straight off the streets of motherfucking Compton, and I think even MC Ren, we designed in my apartment because Ruthless got locked up while they, I mean, I don't know how much you know about all that, but when Jerry Heller uh, said he owned Ruthless and Tamika said she owned Ruthless, they locked yeah. up Ruthless. Yeah. yeah, we designed it all out of my apartment. Um, I had a one now, when, you, when you say we, are, are you talking about, is that Don Cunningham that you're talking about? Me and Donald, but uh, Tamika would come over. One, so one day... Um, I'm sitting there with my girlfriend in my one bedroom apartment and Donald comes over and then, uh, there's a knock on the door and it's Tamika, Ren, Yella, and the twins. You know who the twins are? The bodyguards? No. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, (laughs) half of of NWA is in my house. (laughs) I think we made them. I didn't even have a couch. They sat on the floor. I think I made them coffee, but um, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it was it was it was it was it was cool, and I was twenty three or something at the time. So um, yeah, it was it was a trip. It was fun, and and you know, I remember telling my girlfriend at the time, I am never going to design an album that sells as much as this album. And she was like, don't you know, don't put yourself down like that. Don't think that way. But sure enough, twelve million. Albums later, you know, I never, you know, that was it. Yeah, I mean, I've designed well, I, a lot of other stuff, but nothing that's, you know, like nothing like that. Uh, Eternal is uh, amazing. I, I will say, you know, you, you've you had your hand in, in all the big ones that they had, Um, you know, as far as like, because <clears throat> you came in right after the, the Creeping on a Come Up, and, and you were there, I mean, you yeah. were there till the I think the end of the Bone, you did all their yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's amazing. Until they, until they left. But I got to tell you something. I mean, and you should interview all these people, Donald, Sean, Jason, all of them. They'll all have a different, you know. But when I designed East 1999, Bone was huge. You know, they beat, they were beating Beatles records. You know, like yeah. they, they, they even broke the record for most albums stolen. Like they had like 20,000 albums stolen. Most people don't even sell that many. And everyone was, uh, wow. uh, everyone was like, oh, you designed Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, and, and I was like, yeah, and Easy. And they're like, oh, Easy sucks. Now you tell people, I designed Bone Thugs and Harmony. They're like, oh, okay. And then you said, and I designed the last Easy E album. They're like, wow. So things have, you know, yeah. things have, e- have, have, have flip flopped, you know. Easy is definitely iconic level. Uh you know, in, in a lot of ways, I mean, that, that he may not have been, you know, at, at that time in people's eyes. We we talk about that sometimes on the show, that Easy had, you know, Ghost Riders when he was alive. And, you know, he wasn't always uh, revered as, like, the, you know, the greatest MC. But Ru- right, Ruthless yeah. Records and, and what Ruthless Records means to hip-hop now, I guess, when you look at it, uh, is, is probably why he's on such a huge level. Because Ruthless, uh, it, it was hard to see it you know, back then, how much Ruthless was really going to mean. But when, when you look at it, you look at uh, Easy, you look at Bone, you look at what this did, and, and the fact that Bone is still relevant now. There's there's not a yeah. lot of acts from back then that are relevant now. When <clears throat> when you were working, you know, on those projects, and, and you had mentioned, uh, you know, Don, can you just explain what, you know, his role was? Was he also, because he worked with a lot of projects as well, was he also working directly with Ruthless the way you were? 
Donald Cunningham? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Donald is the one who came up with all the mystic ideas. For you got, have you seen all the commercials from back then? The commercials that you oh, yeah. play on TV. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Donald Absolutely. did all the commercials. Donald's the one who came came up with the seventh sign and you know all the cryptic, mystic stuff. That was all Donald. But Donald was an an artist. But all the ideas and he, Busy even put it in. I mean, he he. If I can say so, I think he influenced lyrics. Um, That's awesome. So Donald came up with a lot of the ideas, a lot of the cra- crazy ideas. Um, now was, was that a lot from the art team, or like was there influence from like Bone and and Ruthless there, or was this kind of like you know, hey, this is what we want, you guys go do it? It's my opinion that it was Donald. <laughs> I mean, it's not to piss off Bone or anything, but a lot yeah, of no. those ideas, a lot of those ideas came from Donald. And then Donald got laid off after the photo shoot for Art of War, maybe. So Donald's... So East 1999 was a collaborative. The concept for Art of War was Donald. And if you look at the artwork, you could tell what Donald did and what I did. I mean, you could tell, you know, the all the, all the Photoshop stuff is me. More of the cutout you know, straight stuff is yeah. Donald. Um, so, yeah. And then Easy E's album, Donald and I did, but that's more my artwork, you know, because there wasn't a lot of... Was there? I got to look at it now. With Easy E's album, was there, a... there wasn't a lot of crazy mystic stuff going on, right? Well, well but well, I do have a question about that cover, though, is that you had that scratch-off part to bleep out yeah. the bad words that was, how did that was Donald's did, idea wow and how did you guys acquire like the materials or the the printing company that could could handle putting that on an album cover because that wasn't a really standard thing to do pissing off relativity because he, uh ruthless was under under uh, relativity at the time so that really pissed off relativity coming up with that idea but <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that, that was unique. That was a really unique idea. You know, I was in high school and all the kids wanted to get the Easy E cover just to scratch off, the, just to see what was behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it now. But um, were, were you guys? Did you guys also design like a lot of the um, like the merchandise and promo materials at that time for for like Bone and other artists? We did, but there's some cool, really cool bone stuff out there that we did not do. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the my favorite non-ruthless thing. There's a bone t-shirt with, like, a B-52 plane on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, Art of that, War. Yeah, that's yeah, that, Art of War that was, that was not us. That's the, coolest, that's the coolest thing that we did not do. But, yeah, we did all the... All the, I mean, all anything with. Have you seen the? Uh, gosh, I wish I still had it. The poster with the pile of skulls on it. Um, anything with skulls and fire is is us. Yeah, and I, I will say, like, you know, the the highlight uh, art to to a lot of fans, of course, Eternal Art of War is way up there. Um, but I also say, like, fans really love like the collection one and two. That artwork is always really just just high in in the fans. Um, oh, really? You, I mean, you you did so much of it though. I mean, even the singles. You know, I I don't know if you know, but Bone fans are big collectors. Um, the fandom is huge. Uh, you know, you you couldn't take certain hip hop acts and have their fans collect the way Bone fans do. But but Bone yeah. CDs still have a lot of um, value, and you created a lot of those. The the first of the month you guys worked on. Uh, first, I remember the first time I heard that. It's and and what's funny about that one is that was going to be the big one before the crossroads was made. That that was going to be the big single. Um, well, yeah, I mean it was. So they had their two hits off their first album, and they were huge. And as soon as you heard first of the month, you, I mean you knew it was a hit. I mean it was it was a hit. And some people made fun of it at the time because they were singing, and but you knew it was a hit. But Crossroads, well, you guys know all this, right? Crossroads got remixed. It wasn't right, a hit until it, got, till, till it got remixed. Once, once it was yeah. remixed, um, then it was a hit. But um, 
my favorite, I still like First of the Month better and than the song with Tupac off Art of War. Now, that originally was just, was it Crazy or, or Lazy and Tupac? Originally, busy, it was... Yeah, Busy. Busy and Tupac made that with was Silky Fine. See, you guys, you guys know more than I do. So have you, now, have you ever heard the demo, the original demo with just the two of them? Yeah, we uh, a lot of the Art of War uh, pre-releases are, are kind of out on the internet now. And, uh, yeah. A lot, we got to hear a lot of what the Art of War originally sounded like before it got kind of finished up. Uh, there's a lot of controversy in the bone world around that and... Um, just how it ended up. I, I personally love that album. I've always I've always loved that album. Uh, I felt like that was the last. I felt like after that album, the um, the sound and even the art, I think, changed a lot. Um, I mean, is yeah. that fair to say going into Resurrection, like the direction, uh, the mystic shit kind of went away? Um, yeah, there did, were too many. What does Resurrection look like? i got to look this stuff up now. Um... You know, once they got, you know, and to be honest, Bone wasn't, you know, re- see Resurrection, we couldn't get a photo shoot. They left the photo shoot. Um, that's, why wow. that's, why, that's why Bone's not on the cover. We couldn't get him to take the, the photos. So after, our, so Art of War was shot by Peter Dokus, who yep. shot a lot of NWA stuff. And we shot, you know, huge photo shoot for two days. And then I think that's the last photo shoot. So, uh, yeah, there, there's some really good photos from the Resurrection era, but I've always wondered why they didn't, you know, why those uh, didn't end up on the cover. They there was a pretty good shoot, and I think some of those photos ended up being used on the collection volume two. Um, the ones of them in the leather. Yeah. Yeah, that that was I forget who shot that. That that there's some good stuff on there. I don't remember why we didn't. I, it's so funny. I can sit down and remember designing that album cover. I don't know if. I mean, Bone was not easy to. You got to interview Sean Williams. Um, yeah, Bone was we'd not love to. easy. He, they, they were not easy to work with. Um, what, what, what kind of concept did you guys have for that BTNH Resurrection photo shoot? Had they shown up? I mean, by that point, it, it was. It was there was too many people. They were too big. Um, you know, it was too hard to get it organized. I don't even. I, I don't. I don't remember. Art of War is the culmination. But you know, Busy didn't show up for the photo shoot for Art of War. That's why he yeah. has no. Uh, that's why he has no makeup on. So Art of War though is me, Donald, Peter, Bone. Double album. That's everybody coming together. After Art of War, Bone was. They were already, you know, they were already splitting up, arguing, drifting off, you know. Yeah, and of course, Resurrection was kind of like the the comeback together album. Um, yeah. And even even called Resurrection. A funny thing about Resurrection, and and you're you're the guy that'll be able to put this this rumor to to death or or give it life. <laughs> um, since that album has been out, a rumor has been that if you look down where the earth is cracking and the light is coming up from the ground, that the word Tupac is hidden in the ground. <laughs> and that people, of course, connect that to the fact that Bone and Tupac were close and there's rumors that Tupac's alive. So the, the guy that made the cover, is, is, is Tupac written or hidden in the Resurrection cover anywhere? Well, I cannot, I cannot answer that question for you. That's just going to have to be a mystery <laughs> that lives on. But that's, I will tell okay. you, I, wor- I worked with Daryl James. I don't know if you know Daryl James from Rap Sheet. I worked with Daryl James for years uh, about several Tupac uh, myths. So, you know. Wow. That's so, awesome. Yeah, that, that is way too good of a story for me to, uh, to, give, you, to give you any that's kind great. of answer. I, I love I'll give you the answer. I can, I'll give you an I'll give you an answer in private. I love the answer. I'm I'm gonna keep asking you resurrection stuff because I think resurrection's a, a fun album. It, it there's just different things about it than the previous you know three albums. Uh, when resurrection came out, their logo got like a facelift. It always been the the two D you know old uh, Beckett type font. On resurrection, it got that 
3D facelift. Who whose idea was that, and why did that happen? You know, I think that was just a ma- I that was me. I before um I think it was you know just because we didn't have bone, you know, we didn't have a photo. But their albums before that, like if you go back to their first album, which I didn't do, the cool thing about it was it looked like a a mixtape, right? Like it looked like right. You know, and that was really cool. But now you're talking 14 million albums later. So it was just, a, you know, the fact that we were bum- bummed that they weren't on the cover and to give them a face, you know, give the logo a facelift. And we had to 3D it. Uh, we had to vectorize it by then. Cause, right. You know, the r- original Ruthless logo, the original Bone logo were just drawings. But you know what? We There are other album covers for resurrection we did other album covers but i don't even know if i have them anymore do you, do you remember what any of them might have been were they all kind of the same theme or were they completely different no than... no they were completely different themes we had different album covers for art of war and resurrection but back then unfortunately um you know we, we, you didn't have external hard drives and disposable disk space like you know you you only kept the finals you know yeah you you didn't keep every draft of every different thing. That that's so the case with you know so much of uh, music in general back then. You know, uh, same thing with the recording. They they didn't keep all these extra takes, and you know certain things got snuck out on on tapes. But you know there was only so much room to keep the recordings, and that's why we don't have. You know, they talk about all the stuff they recorded back then that that we don't have now because like you said space just you you couldn't keep it all so it is unfortunate i'll look it up for you i have the binders right here I have the binders in my hands so i'll look it uh, up for you see if, see if there's anything um from resurrection but i know we did a lot of album covers for resurrection um one, one of the things that i know you did uh you you did the 10th anniversary the ruthless records 10th anniversary um, and of course, you know, Eternal, and, and there was a couple of these albums that had that Easy E one one five two three R I P logo on it. Uh, w- was that you, or who designed that and came up with that idea? Because that's that's really it's. I designed it. Donald came up with it. That's of course the uh, number of days he was alive. If you look close at uh, Straight Off the Streets of Motherfucking Compton, you can see one one five two three in white in the right corner. So, we did sneak it in there. Yeah, that's awesome. I lo- I love the the snuck in things and and I I thought that was such a creative idea and and that logo. I mean, I think in in the bone world maybe it doesn't have the charm uh, today that it did, but it it must have had a good ten plus year run where like that was synonymous with fans like everywhere. You know, you saw that logo and 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 your your artwork and the artwork that you guys were involved in. Um, is still to this day uh, staples. You know that that artwork, as far as like the under the tray in Eternal, um, even that some of the stuff in the, in oh, the yeah. booklet that 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 stuff is still today. I mean that I would say, wouldn't you agree, John? I mean those are like the big images that people think of that and like creeping on a come up images. Th- not only that, we, us. Uh... Cecil and I have imitated what you guys did in the Eternal album cover on those sides. You know, the don't give props to the devil, believe in the last days. Every album we've released together, we've made sure to put some kind of secret message in the spine there. So, well, you know yeah. what happened was, here's what happened is way back then, I was young and, you know, I, I, I did it on a bunch of albums. I designed for Social Distortion. I did it on the Social Distortion album. I would always... I was always afraid I wasn't going to get credit, so I would sneak my initials in. If you look at straight off the streets of motherfucking Compton, in between the six and the four, there's a GC for Julio Costanzo, and then Donald caught it and crossed out my G and put DC for Donald Cunningham. So when we were doing East 1999, I thought, I'm going to sneak it in on the spine. No one's ever going to see it. So then he thought that was such a good idea uh, we started doing Sanskrit and uh, Hebrew and Tyree. You reminded me of Tyree. Tyree, who did the illustrations, 
thought we were crazy and was like, man, don't give props to the devil. And we, we were laughing our asses off. We were like, that's so funny. We got to put that. So we put that on the other spine. That's how that came up. Oh, that's Ooh. awesome. That, <laughs> <laughs> that nice. is awesome. That those, uh, those tabs have been like, you know, I, I remember that being like hot topic, you know, years and years ago that, did, have you guys found the hidden messages inside of a you know well, eternal? I'm kind of and... disappointed that people found it so quick. You know, because people found it right away. I thought you know, but going Bone fans back, are uh, fucking nuts. Going back I mean... a second, the picture from the collection volume two was shot for BTNH Resurrection. Yeah. So why now? That's not one picture. That's a collage of them. But why? Right. So why we didn't use that? I mean, to tell you the truth, Rufus might have just been pissed off at Bone and didn't want to put him on the cover. It may have just been that. I don't really remember. Yeah, fans have always wondered, you know, because I think even the insert, even the insert of Resurrection has uh, a really nice photo of Bone. I think they were all kind of wearing the skulls and braids at that point, like Crazy Bone and that's, was. And was... that's an actual picture. That's one picture. That's not a collage. So I don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That's a good. That's hey. a good question. I'm, I'll look through my CDs. Uh, when I say CDs, I mean of, of data, because pre pre DVD days, um, and yeah. see if I can find the other Resurrection covers, and that might jog my memory. What what happened? But I don't know. I don't remember. Now, I'm gonna just. We got a bunch of. The, the fans, when I put it out that we were interviewing you, there's so many questions here. Some of them you may have answers to. Some of you may not. A lot of them are around Eternal. So we'll I'll just shoot some off and see what you know. Um, All right, cool. The, let's see. First, let, let's just talk about under the under the tray, okay? You got that, the big circle. I assume Tyree, did, did he draw that? Under the tray or the actual, the actual CD or under the CD? Uh, under the CD, there's there's a picture. It's all a bone together, but around it, there's a circle. It's got four skull hands, and uh, man, is yeah. it a big piece of talking in the bone world. Yeah, that was Tyree. All the illustrations were Tyree, and we had to beg him to do it. It's so funny. Um, he, so yeah. Did, did, did he just not like the theme? Was that just not? He was young. Oh, my God. He was so young. Yeah. Um, I mean, if I was in my early 20s, I mean, he might, he might have been a teenager. I don't even remember. He was so for, young. For... And, I mean, we no one knew, you know. We thought, you know. I mean, I'm so lucky to have, to have done this stuff, you know. I mean, no one knew what was going on. Yeah. So, it was, you know, it was like, I don't know. You want to do an illustration, and, but it's got to be this, it's got to be that. I mean, you don't know, like. 20 years later, someone's going to be asking you a question about it. I forgot Tyree's name until you brought it up the other day. For for everybody um, listening that doesn't know, Tyree went on to, he actually draws for Bob's Burgers, the um, the, the the animated cartoon. It's on TV, and, and that's what he does now. So, but oh, He's it, crazy his, talented. He's done, you should check out uh, his videos. Um, one of his first gigs, talented. I think, was this, though, was, was drawing for... Um, Drawing for this rep, uh, for this record, and now was that was that like you and Donald just saying, "Hey, this this is what we want." Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the piece I'm talking about is actually also used on the front of like the collection volume one. What's that? I, yeah, I the, cut out for a the, second. the 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 piece I'm talking about is actually used on the the cover of collection volume one. I think it's used on the East 1999 uh, single. It's it's been used quite a bit that that drawing. Um, and it, and it says like some certain things in it, it says like suppress, uh, but I believe suppress is spelled like incorrectly. It says, sell, uh, says invoke, um, just to make sure I know which one you're talking about. It's two circles with like the hands and the triangle. Mm -hmm. You got that it. That is not Tyree. That's Donald. That is not Tyree. Okay. That, there, is see, that thing is, I, I think that is probably... John, that's got to be the most, like, you seeked out little piece of artwork in, like, the bone world, I think. Here's how you know the difference between me, Donald, and Tyree. Donald's stuff looks really, uh, like, 
architectural drawings. Like there's no mm-hmm. blur, there's no fed, there's no filter, there's no feather. Everything looks like you know what I mean, like a jigsaw puzzle. Like click, 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 click. Tyree's stuff, you can see like if you look at the tray of uh, Eternal with the skulls. He his looks like a drawing, like an artist, you know. Um, then my stuff is all the Photoshop stuff. Right. Yeah. So Donald, if you look at the Art of War, and you see like all the bombs and all the icons. That's all Donald. Oh, when you open it up, yeah, the the whole the arsenal and the weaponry and all that, right? But if you look at the inside of uh, Straight Off the Streets of Motherfucking Compton. The blood and the and, and all that, that's all me. All the Photoshop stuff. So yeah. You had mentioned the like some of the you know, the Arabic Israel letters and everything that you guys were using. Uh on the cover of Eternal, there's like a um it almost looks like a billboard and I think it says homies in English and then there's some 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 sort of other language in there. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's got to be the uh, the three D artist that you mentioned. Yeah, the Quentin. So the, the, uh. Yeah, that's all Quentin. So, okay, oh, see, so you can see the logo. How simple the logo was going back here. Okay, so there's three artists on this. So Quentin did all the background, and you can see by the texture. So the Omis, I don't know, I, I don't know, I don't know what that means. You know, and even now it was Donald's idea to put Eric in the window, but that but Quentin actually did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think then the, said that. The Photoshop of them on the picture is me, and then the pentagram is Donald. I was gonna ask, I've read on your Facebook page, and I don't think a lot of fans know, but the, the piece that says E nineteen ninety nine Eternal. It almost looks like a backward seven. I read that that's actually the the left side of a pentagram. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, the, the triangle. Yes. You, you guys didn't know that? I I I don't think like anybody's ever because I mean even Lazy Bone still puts that on T-shirts and stuff. And I don't. I think Lazy Bone would probably be bummed out if he knew he was putting <laughs> a pentagram on his T-shirt. <laughs> Well, they got yeah, they 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 got mad at me a couple of times because I said some stuff. Because they're you know they're they're uh, spiritual people. They got mad at me a couple of times. Did did you guys ever get too spooky? Like there was, I mean, was some of this artwork just too too spooky for them? It, like some of the pentagrams and not for busy bone, not for busy. <laughs> never never was. Um, but yeah, that's the left side of the pentagram. I mean, if you look at uh, Eric's last album. You can see that I hand drew that on the background too. There's like a little, uh, uh, a little triangle uh, did, in the did, background. Did you guys ever have some artwork that you presented that was just flat out rejected because it was just too much? Um, you guys are all gonna hate me, but I gotta tell you, Bone did not have that much to do with their artwork. That's that's fair. That's a question we've always wondered if if they were if they were involved like that or if this was more like ruthless and the artist just kind of building this imagery. It was yeah, they did not have that much to do with it. I mean, Busy really got into it. But um uh, no. Nope, not not back then. Yeah. Wow. Hey, that's, I mean, that's, that's good. I've, I've always wondered if, you know, if Ruthless and, or, you know, who was it that kind of had the, the vision because the, the stuff is very consistent. And I mean, even I've always appreciated that even like the singles and, and it, and it goes to show you that singles were important back then in a way that, you know, they may not be now, but even like, I oh, thought yeah. it was creative, like the, the Crossroads single was made and it was a, you know, it was a cross, but it said Crossroads and it was simple, but I, I thought that was a, a great idea and everything's very unified from you know uh I, I would say the art of war down i mean you guys even did a great job kind of unifying and continuing creeping on a come up even though that wasn't a project you were involved with yeah oh uh, was um let me see here let me get back to my i had all those questions lined up about the eternal cover um the inside there's a there's a backwards there's a a passage that's backwards 
I remember I had to read it in a mirror. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about inside Eternal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who 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 came up with that? Where where did that idea come from, and and who wrote it? Oh, Donald. Donald came up with it, and Donald wrote it. Wow, that that is amazing, and and yeah, he he that that's insane. I mean, he built such just the the roots of bone are are really built off. I think a lot of this visual artwork, you know, the visual piece. Yeah aided them a lot that sound that they make yeah wow that's so, so, so then is so there's a rumor i don't know if you've heard it but that that written backwards is a riddle that if you break it down and use the map on the other panel that it spells out a phone number if you break down the yep. whole encryption yep. of it so so is that is that true or is that fans going crazy making the that's stuff that's absolutely up? absolutely correct and it used to go to a 1-800 number, and you'd call the 800 number, and there would be a message. That's absolutely correct. So who came up with that idea? Because that is mind-blowing. That is, that, that's so cool. That was, that was Donald. That was Donald. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, and now did you guys, I, I remember, you know, figuring that out, and, um, but, I, I, you know, the Internet obviously wasn't, a, you know, a thing um for it to just be spoiled was it did you guys find out that people figured that out relatively quickly i know you said that people found the you know the don't give props you know pretty quick did did you think people were figuring out like the map i uh, people figured it out quicker than i thought they would i was a little surprised how quick people figured it out but i mean then again you got to remember it sold millions of copies i mean millions so there's a million people like you know spreading the word, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I was designing albums, you know, oh, well, I, you know, I, no one gave me freedom like that with boys to men or anything like that, but you know, right. right. I didn't think, you know, I didn't think it was, you know, I, I, I did hide some stuff that no one ever found, but when you sell a couple million albums and you go to number one, it's, it's all going to be found. It's all going to be found. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised. But you, you, you said you found, you hid some stuff that was never found, though. Not on Bone. Not on Bone. No, on other people. I don't think there's anything oh, okay. on Bone. But you guys didn't know about the pentagram, so that's yeah, one, I read a, one I read, thing. Now, was it intentionally, was the pentagram intentionally just the left-hand side, or, or was it the whole thing? Was there a bigger picture there? It was intentional. There's no way in 1991 we would have put a pentagram. There's no way we would. I mean, people would have would have freaked out, yeah. you know. And we, we, you know, we weren't devil worshippers. We were just having fun, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but there's no it's... way. There's no way we would have put a we would have put a pentagram. But putting the left, you look at it with East 1999 and Eternal going down. It just looks like a design element. Um, I I think a lot of people think it's part of the map, the map on the inside. Yeah. You know the the. It's it's very similar. So I think a lot of people have thought that was uh, part of the map for a lot of a lot of years. Um, I know you kind of said it on your Facebook, but I mean that probably didn't make it go wild. So for the Bone fans, just just so you know, the the black triangle that's that's a pentagram, and it and it's pointed is is it intentionally pointed at Eze? Yeah, I think that's is that what it was? I think so. You know, because the whole thing. If you look at the Easy Eat commercials, they made the commercials like he was still alive, you know. So that was like the fun that Easy Eat was still alive, and um, so I think that's I think that was the intent that it was pointing at him, right? We, uh, look at that. Yeah, I think that was the little joke that it was pointing at Easy. But then again, it's so symmetrical. No, I don't think it was pointing at Easy. I think it was just symmetrical. People, um, it's so funny that that, you know, that's such a simple little thing, easy E being just cut out and put up in that window. But, you know, that that's one of the most pointed out things. Uh, maybe not as much now, but I remember getting the, the record and people were like, oh, did you see easy E like, like he was super hidden or something. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, it, it's such a great move. It's, it's a classic, it's a classic move for that album. Uh, and and again, it's I I told you I was on your website, and if if you guys haven't you know visited this website, it has a it's the most beautiful 
version of Eternal I've ever seen. I've never seen it look this nice. Uh, it, it blows my mind. Is is a lot of artwork like that? Does it get crunched down by the time it goes to printing and never looks like as good as you want it to? I mean, I I do a little artwork and I always have that, but I'm like, well, maybe I fuck it up. But does that happen to you guys too? Is it not as great well, when it I goes mean, to print? Twenty five years ago, you would go to do press checks. You would go to the print shop and say, oh, that's too much red, that's too much yellow, or they would FedEx you proofs, and you would say, too much color here, too much color there. Now, you just, you know, cross your fingers and and hope for good, or you know enough to know where it's going to go. But back then, you would go and say, that's the wrong red, do this, do that. So, back then, I think they FedExed us. Um, they printed it in New York and FedExed, boy, I wish I had those, huh? The press matches. The, the oh, original yeah. uh, proof sheets. But, um, yeah, back, no, back then you would make sure your color was right. You would you would make sure that it wasn't, because that could have, the, uh, the Eternal album could have gone too dark easily. It's a dark cover. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, no, you would, you, would, you would print check back then. And the printer, you'd work with the printer and go back and forth. I don't know why stuff gets so messed up on the internet. It should all be the same file. But man, I, I think it's, you know, pe people try to scan the cover and then people scan it different qualities and stuff. And they just kind of get stuck online because e even when I look at the cover though, like the way it's printed out, it's that, that version on your website is, is beautiful. I'll, I'll post that up for everybody in, in the link in the description. Um, I wanted to make sure I got a couple questions in before we let you go from some people that were excited to ask you different questions on, on the board as well. We work with a couple uh, Bone Thugs boards. One of them's been around for forever now, over, I think, 10 years, B-Teenage board, and then we have our own Beyond the Harmony board. Uh, one of the big questions, Julio Guerrero, he wanted to know if you remember making the Look Into My Eyes single because he wants to know the disc, uh, the actual disc has a set of eyes. He believes that's Wishbone, and he wants to know if, if, if it is, and if it is, why Wish was the one selected to be the eyes for that CD. Oh, boy. Look Into My Eyes was off the Batman soundtrack, right? Yes, yeah, and then Art of War as well, yeah. And... You know, the original uh, sample for Look Into My Eyes, I think, was a Coca-Cola commercial. Uh, Coca if I Could Teach the World. If I Could Teach the World was a Coca-Cola commercial, yeah. Right, okay, okay. They are Wish's Eyes. Why did I use Wish's Eyes? All right, well, you can't use Crazy's Eyes because they're never open, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I mean, Wish was the most uh, cooperative in photo shoots. So I just had I just had more pictures of his eyes to use. So I, I've I've notoriously heard over the years that they're they're harder to uh to do in photos. In fact, when I was talking to Quentin who did, you know, the three D rendering, he goes, um Yeah, I didn't work with the band much. He goes, uh they just they said they needed this this city, and uh, he goes. When I saw the picture, he said that nobody in the picture wanted to smile, and uh, yeah, I thought I thought that was funny. Uh, of course, you know, in, in hip hop, they're not going to smile. I, I thought it was great that that Quentin thought they should smile, um, but I, yeah, I have heard that that's there are, yeah, never I, I've smile, heard... never smile in hip hop. That's no, like, never. When I my first pictures, I I would smile, and people were like stop smiling. And I was like, all oh, right, I look awful. <laughs> yeah they're like you're you know you're with ruthless records now you you can't be throwing all those smiles out there yeah so, exactly let me see that i wanted to ask a follow-up about that one. Oh, we were talking about the photos and one of the things that that uh john had actually asked maybe maybe you know maybe you don't on thug world order we finally got a picture of bone again it's it's you know everybody but flesh and uh Busy Bones got two fists in the air. Crazy Bones got one. And any idea what was going on in that photo shoot? Why that turned out like that, or was that just some kind of random, the way that went? Doug World Order was supposed to be uh, Black Panther inspired. So, yeah. a Lazy Bone, Lazy and Crazy have the right pose, um, right? The one right arm up in the air. Yeah. Uh, 
asking you why busy put two with the world will never know. And, right and on. Why is it wish wish has both arms behind his back? Right. Um, does, did, did that mean anything or signify? I think no, he was being forced. Right? I'm going to take back. I'm going to take back everything I ever said. Now, Dark World Order was their concept. I think that was that actually was their concept. They wanted to do a Black Panther uh, type cover. So that they definitely were involved in that. I forgot about that one. Sorry. So that was definitely a bone concept. Yeah, hey, that's great. I'm I'm glad that they. Uh, it's it's too bad it took that long to to get there, but uh, you know, I'm I'm glad that they did get involved. And and that was really like I think their last. They they did have a one off called Thugs, uh, and I believe that's after they'd already left Ruthless. Um, yeah. I, I know you were there for a while. Like you were there when Hobson was there. Is that right? Oh yeah, yeah. I did. I did Hobson's album cover. Boy, is Hobson still? Uh, is he still killing it on the internet? Yeah, Hobson still does really good. He he made his own label for a while called Funk Volume, and uh, yeah, he's done really good. And you know, he's very talented. Hobson. Um, what was some of the last stuff I did? I guess Hobson was the last release I did. But when, you know, when did you leave? When when were you finished with uh, Ruthless? I mean, I just had lunch with Tamika a few weeks ago, so. I don't know if you're ever finished with Ruthless. <laughs> good, <laughs> yeah. good answer. Okay, I like that. Um, yeah. That's awesome. But, you know, now, Ty, uh, real quick, going back to a couple things. Tyree did all the artwork for First of the Month. All those illustrations, that's Tyree. Oh, okay. You know, cool. the, the, the four-color uh, stuff. And, um, yeah. And then the other thing is, speaking of Tamika, um, you know, Tamika has sold more albums than Eric ever did. Wow. Not many oh, people. Under her. Yeah. Not, not many people ever, uh, ever talk about, you know, talk about that. How many albums she sold and then movies now. So, you know, That's amazing Tamika, and, and you could probably, you know, weigh, weigh in on this. Tamika gets a, a bad rap. I always kind of, um, and of course I, I, I don't know the lady, but I, I look at the body of work and how long she was really able to make Ruthless survive, and she had really big shoes to fill. Uh, she she gets a really tough rap, I think, especially from Bone fans. Uh, how was your, you know, you, you said you were just with her. I, I assume your relationship with Tamika was good. How was things where you were, you know, a member of Ruthless Records? Okay. I got to tell you, uh, I know Tamika better than I ever knew Eric, you know, I got to tell you, Tamika is a behind-the-scenes kind of person. You know, you don't see her, you know, at the Grammy uh, or, or at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. You know, you could see her, like, kind of in the back. Like, there's no magazine articles about her. She's not, you know, she doesn't like being in the forefront. Tamika, whatever anyone's opinion of her, I have a very, very high opinion of her. I get along with her extremely well. But whatever your opinion of her is, this lady owns a black-run, black-owned record label, and she's a woman, and she's sold millions of albums and has made a movie reminding people how relevant NWA is. You know, if you do the tree, right, from NWA, you get... You know, you, you go Dre, Eminem, you know, 50 Cent, you know, Snoop, you know, like, I mean, it all, West Coast, between Dre, Easy e and Ice Cube, it all comes from NWA. She's kept them relevant for 25 years. So, in my opinion, she doesn't get nearly enough credit. Um, yeah. So, I think, I, think, I think the world of her, you know, you got to remember... Bone was not you. They're extremely talented. They were not easy to work with. Yeah, yeah. I mean that you know, and that's and that's something that that people know uh, today. And and I think when yeah we see these old videos of of them, you know, from the mid '90s, I think you can tell that it it uh it was tough. I'm, and I'm sure again she was kind of thrown in that that position and and had to take over yeah. for easy. And you know, I'm sure that and, was and, yeah. She 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 did it. But, you know, Bone was the artist. They were crazy talented, crazy talented. 
But they got nominated for a Grammy, didn't show up. You know. That's, but that's uh, but I like Bone too. I have good, uh, you know. But you got you, for for Bone stories, not art stories, but just Bone stories. You got to talk to Sean Williams. He'll tell you all the Bone stories. Yeah, I'll make uh, I'll make a note. That'd be great. We we like to talk to everybody. You know, every every piece of it is important. That's that's why we we were doing this. We were like this this is a great group with a lot of history, and and the history is deep. Uh, you know, even to to someone like yourself, I mean. The assumption would be, and and I guess maybe we're the dream crushers a little bit, that we we tell the world all the behind the scenes stuff that maybe Bone didn't come up with all the the mystical stuff, but but I like to know that stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's a great team. You know, everybody plays a part, right down to the artwork. Exactly. Now, um, have you guys talked to Unique? Say that again. Have you talked to DJ Unique? No, he's he's on our list of of people that we uh we we do have contact with Unique and we're hoping to set something up with him in the future. So because, man, e- Eternal, that is, I mean, that is that's a concept album, you know. Like yeah. he tied it, he tied it all together, and he, he was a little ahead of the time, right, with all the intros and the segues. Like not a lot of people were doing that back then. Yeah, same same thing with the Art of War. I always say that about the Art of War. Um, a question that somebody did have about the Art of War that you may be able to uh, answer. Um, inside of the Art of War artwork, there's there's almost what appears to be DNA, Oracle, um, DNA. And there, there used to be a rumor that that album was go- was going to be called DNA Level C. And that, uh, that may be why that was drawn like that because originally it was going to be like that do you know if it was ever going to be called something else or was it no. pretty much always going to be the art of war it was always the art of war because busy was reading um sun tzu. Sun tzu? yeah sun tzu yeah so busy was yeah. reading busy and i think donald may have given busy a copy of the art of war that he, that, wow. that that'd be a donald donald may have come up with that name um, but everyone was reading Sun Tzu back at the time. I, I read it. Everyone, everyone read it. Donald read it. I know Busy read it. So as far as I know, it was always it was always the Art of War. Um, it definitely wasn't what you just said because I've I've never I've never heard that. DNA level C. Just so you know, it's uh, it yeah. says Cleveland Cleveland backwards. DNA level C. Yeah. So... No. 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 <laughs> The hexagons on the inner tray, like underneath the CD yep. with the skull, the, yeah. all those hexagons have numbers in it, and nobody figured out, at least to my knowledge, what that all, what all those four digit numbers mean. You got any hints? For us? <laughs> I I, rem- I remember putting those there. You know, back then, pre pre internet, like the skulls, you know, where their faces are turning into skulls, and like finding pictures of blood and dead bodies. Donald and I used to just go to bookstores and look for old detective books uh, of crime scenes. And uh, it, there weren't filters back then. There weren't brushes back then. You couldn't just brush blood or splatters. You know, we had to, we had to make every splatter. We had to make every... So, um, like, the, the, the skeletons, all that stuff, we had to find it or make it all. You couldn't just go to stock photography back then. Yeah. So, um, those unfortunately don't don't mean anything. They were just part of the, uh, you know, part of the vibe of the art of war and the skeletons. And we had so many. The art of war, you know, a lot of those three D skeletons uh, were made because we were afraid bone wouldn't show up for a fo- for the photo shoot. So, oh, wow. um, you know what? Actually, the back bone the back was- cover. Yeah, Bone was actually 3D scanned for a game. Somewhere there's 3D scans of all of them. Wow! Uh, wow. Holy Whoa. shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were three. They were. I know Busy was. I know at least one of them was. So a lot. So a lot of those skeletons are left over from like what we were gonna do, and we're like, okay, well let's use this. The back is it the back cover where there where there's four skeletons and they're holding a flag. He, um. On the back of the Art of War, they um yeah it's it's the four skeletons are all holding weapons, and then on the inside, smaller, there's a there's one of them yeah, all holding flags. Yeah, that was flag. that was gonna be the cover if they didn't show up for the photo shoot. Oh really? The the holding the flag? Yeah, 
Yeah, that was going to be the cover if they didn't show up. And we, we even did press matches of it and and everything. Um, we we actually yeah, that, a lot of that stuff was just was just you know adding to the 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 flavor of the album. You, you said that Vizzy didn't show up for that uh, photo shoot. John has actually spent some time with uh, with Busy and interviewed him, and and he asked him specifically about why he didn't have the makeup. And uh, he had said that he didn't go. He he thought the idea was really stupid, and it's something that he regrets. Just so you know, uh, that he 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 now sees what what the uh, the idea was, and and wishes that he would have done that. Um, do 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 you remember the photos like? The, the busy photos almost look I'm, I'm trying to pinpoint kind of when those busy bone photos came from because they do stand out obviously compared to the other art of war photos right because busy is blurry and yellow and has no makeup on uh you can see he's not as sharp yeah so I, it, it might have been a publicity shoot i don't know there are a lot of uh publicity photos of bone i don't know i don't remember i remember putting it there i remember finding it do you, do you remember when we were talking um I, I know we're gonna have to wrap up with you here in a minute so uh do you remember when we were talking about eternal and the uh the easy e do you remember whose idea specifically it was let's put easy e up in that window it's got to be donald it had to be Donald. yeah yeah it, it had to be that's right when i started working that 3D picture uh, was already in. Donna was way into 3D stuff back then. I wasn't. Um, so, yeah, we, that, that 3D was, I, I wasn't in the studio when that 3D picture was made or anything. I thought it was cool as heck, you know, 25 yeah. years ago. Um, but, yeah, that, was, that, that, was, that, was all, that, that wasn't Quentin. It had to be Donald. And I guess before uh, I guess well the the last thing that I'll I'll ask you before um before we wrap with you here is if you remember working on Lazy Bone did his first solo he did it under Alberna the artwork is not I mean even the name isn't Bone inspired was do you remember if if was he really trying to look and and be outside of like the Bone look and feeling at that point or do you do you know why that that album was so unbone almost they were all supposed to have solo albums i think that was the deal after art of war was they were all going to have solo albums um so he's, he's wearing blue in that or something right let me look it up real quick yeah he's he's wearing all jean jackets and and he, it actually went under l berna and um even the artwork's like very blue and uh just you know not bone Old English Beckett, you know, very common to see them use that kind of style. And it just seemed very different for him at that time. Almost like he was kind of trying to go away from that that look. Well, I wish we could we could do some of these over. Um, I, you know, I know that they were all going to have solo albums. That was So I don't know if they were planning on breaking up or what their plan was. I know Lazy was available for things a lot more than everyone else. But um, I love I, I I don't I hate the logo and the type treatment, but I love that picture of him. I don't remember, yeah. but they all you know they all had nicknames. Uh, Leatherface, they, you know, they all had other names besides right. like, crazy, you know. So um, so he went with his with his nickname. I have no idea why. Well, I don't right, know. His nickname prior to that was the number one assassin, and so I think a lot of us were right. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, wow, so El Berna Burner. was like, "What? What the fuck is this?" Um, yeah, it's, it seemed like a weird switch. Um, Sean well, might I, I know, know the. Uh, if you interviewed everyone, someone would have uh, someone would have the answer. Sean might. That's, Sean might know that. I don't know. That's that's the plan: is to slowly, one at a time, interview everybody uh, about everything. Um, I, I, I want to, uh, thank you for coming on. I, I know we were on a, a tight budget uh, tonight for time. I think we hit a lot of the big questions. Hopefully, Julio, we get you back on here. If somebody wanted to look at your art, get in contact with you. Uh, what's, what's the best ways to, uh, to find you on the internet? Firebrain. Firebraininc.com. Anything Firebrain. It's all, uh, 
So just look up Firebrain and you'll find me. Go to firebrainate.com or Firebrain on Facebook, Firebrain Project, but uh, Firebrain at AOL, Firebrain at Firebrain Inc. Anything Firebrain related, you'll, you'll, you'll find me. And I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit down with all these CDs because th- this was a blast. You guys, you guys, this, this is a lot of fun. I appreciate it. I I, yeah. I want to thank you guys. I'm gonna go through all these CDs and I, I'm gonna see if I can find any clues to uh to things. And if you need to get in touch with any of these people, I'm still friends with all of them. Um, let me know. Oh, yeah, that'd I'll, be awesome. I'll, 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 I don't. I mean, I, you know, you, you're not going to get in touch with Tamika, but if you Donald and Sean and all those guys, they would love to talk to you. They would, they would love to go through this stuff. But I got to yeah. tell you, the best thing I heard, the best thing I heard was about Tupac's name being on uh, Resurrection. <laughs> that's, that is the best thing I've heard. I, I will I will send you a video. Uh... That that shows the speculated places as well, and it uh, might be. So, I, I I was a little crazy about Tupac back then, but we'll never know. I I will send you those. Uh, I I do want to say too, just on Firebrain Inc. I love that you have your little logo and and that you actually created it. And all the places that you go, you take the picture with the Firebrain oh, yeah. Inc. <laughs> in in all the different places. I. I yeah. think that's really cool. So, yeah, Very I appreciate cool. it, guys. You guys are kind of fun. And uh, email email me any questions you have. I, I I promise to go through. I still have all my archives, so I promise to go through them all and and, and try to find you something special. Very awesome. We hope to have you back on again, Julio. Thank you for coming on tonight. You have a great rest of your evening, man. Yeah, all right, you guys. Thanks. Have a good one. Take care. Bye. There it is, Johnny. I have been so excited to do that interview for so... <laughs> How long have I bugged you to do, you oh, know, man. this internet? I, 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 I just... I think that guy, and I'm, I'm excited, you know, I was excited to interview him. I'm excited to interview some of the guys that he's telling us to interview, like Donald Cunningham. Um, be, because look, look, this is what I'm talking about. Look at how much we just found out that, that you couldn't have found out unless you interviewed the guys making the fucking artwork. You couldn't have asked Bone those questions. The, the closure that I just experienced to know that the map was intentional with the back the backwards writing. I mean, I'm elated right now. I <laughs> I, I can't believe this just happened. Um, yeah, man, I'm so glad you, you found Julio for us to, to talk to because, oh, man, I'm, I'm nearly speechless. I'm so thrilled right now. It, it's exciting to know that like the fans weren't crazy and we didn't just make some shit up that <laughs> that wasn't fucking real um yeah and and I love that they thought this out uh, I'm not even mad that it wasn't bone in fact I think bone fans are gonna be kind of relieved like you know that that bone wasn't the one saying stick all that evil shit in there you, you guys just heard that they uh they, they didn't even like all that evil shit in there you know I mean I I I liked it. I I miss <laughs> not quite the evil shit, but I miss the the imagery that of that time period. Um, but, I but, I do but, as well, but but I like knowing that you know Donald Cunningham and and Julio Guerrera, you know, or uh, excuse me, rather, um, Julio Costanzo are the ones that are coming up with those. Like, I'm I I like knowing that you know Bone wasn't like put all this evil shit in here. You know, like there was a team coming up behind that, you know, Bone has always said, hey, we're very religious people. And, you know, Bone fans kind of believe, well, they were evil for a while. Then they got religious. Uh, Well, well, I had always suspected that there was an art team outside of Bone doing all this art. And it was nice to have that confirmed. And the reason why I always thought that was because that imagery went away somewhat as time went on and it, you know, bone always seemed to be wanting to shake the evil, you know, the evil imagery off of them. Um, so I figured that as they left ruthless, so did the art, the artist that created that imagery. And now we got some closure to find out that in fact, you know, those guys that we see in the eternal credits are in fact the ones behind the whole idea behind and, it. And it's, it's cute that busy was interested in some of the imagery it, and philosophy. Yeah. And and Julio, you know, said that that Don Donald Cunningham got laid off at one point. It sounds like, you know, if you if you look him up on on Discogs, you'll see uh, that you know 
Julio was there uh, uh, quite a bit longer, and it sounds like he was the one that was really coming up with a lot of the cryptic, and it, and it makes you wonder if he would have been there longer than Art of War, if, if wow. that imagery, you know, would have continued, because, again, you just heard, he was the one coming up with, with the real cryptic hidden stuff. To, to, for for Don Cunningham, for for an individual, one person, I always wondered who concocted that whole entire mystery. I mean, that that's an elaborate storyline to create and then to translate it into a map. I mean, when you Amazing. think about it, like every time I do it, when I made the video, I was thinking, who came up with? How could somebody have come up with this kind of stuff? So, it uh, it ma it makes me want to see other artwork he's done because I'm like, there there's no way that he was just that creative for one. Yeah. There's, there's no way he was that creative for just one album. You know, this this guy. Um, but, hey, you, you guys just got a lot of answers. There was a lot of great answers there. I loved the Tupac answer. Um, I I loved that, you know, you got your answer as far as what do the numbers and Art of War mean. Hey, they don't mean anything, and that's great. If you've been trying to figure it out since fucking 1998, you can, you can stop trying to crack the code. There's no code to crack, kids. But, you know, as we were talking, and, and I, I didn't ask because I figured it'd be more a question for Don Cunningham, I never noticed until a few minutes ago that there's two faces that look like mummies or like pharaoh faces or maybe alien faces in that same Art of War under panel. And uh, we may have to discuss this later on, but there's, there's a face on the right side and a face on the left side, and both faces only have one eye. Um, and I never saw this for 20 years or however long it's been. It's the first time I've seen it because I have it enlarged on my screen. And uh, so there's something for everybody to look for. Is on the right side. It's the right and the left side of the top parts of the hexagon. So so look look for those and think of like a like a pharaoh or like a mummy. What a mummy would look like if you if you took if you opened up the casket what their face would look like after 2,000 years of decomposing. And uh, so there's some faces there. I never noticed it until just now. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have to get uh, Don, Don Cunningham on here. Um, and it sounds like we, we got a great link to that now, which is outstanding. And it, it sounds like he'll have even more to tell us. Uh, so we're going to have to do that coming up. This, this interview just... This is everything that I, I wanted, man. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, we keep saying this about, you know, the guests that we bring on. We're like, this is what Beyond the Harmony is all about. And it consistently delivers, like, more than I even expected. And this is, like, this interview we just did is, I mean, this is the essence of Beyond the Harmony. We're getting answers that people, myself, have had for t two decades and yeah. getting to find out. Yeah. No, it was, it was great. Julio had a... a a ton of answers and uh, I mean he he even had answers to stuff that you know I, I wasn't sure if you know a, a guy doing art um, was gonna have those kind of answers you know because you just don't know how involved somebody is and uh, yeah he uh, it was it was awesome I, I hope that answered a lot for a, a lot of people we had limited time with him me and John I, I could have kept that guy talking for fucking forever bro <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, he he was a fun interview, and it was good to hear that he's still in touch with Tamika, which in indicates that Ruthless is still going strong. And well, obviously they just did straight out of Compton. Um, so you know, the, to me, I was a Ruthless fan with Easy and NWA, and you know, because Tamika was his wife, I always respected her. You know, regardless of what, because uh, Bone came after Easy. You know, so I, I've always had respect for Ruthless Records, Tamika Wright, and um, and it's nice to hear that you know that she is a substantial woman and that trivia piece that she sold more records than easy E did. So that is, that's phenomenal. It's big. That's huge. That's, that's massive. And, and I mean, it makes fucking sense, bro. It makes, it makes sense. You know, I don't, I don't hate Tamika. I, I've always thought Tamika got a, you know, a bum rap. Um, could, could have Tamika changed their contracts? Probably. Uh, but yo, when, when, if somebody's threatening to fucking kill you and shit, you're like, you know what? I'm not going to do anything. I don't have to I, do. I, thought, so. I, I thought she looked so cool in the, the BNK music video. Yeah, so like, absolutely. I mean, 
And that you know, he, he made a great point and it, and it actually, you see it come to life almost in the B and K music video where she's kind of representing like a, a female mobster boss. Um, she runs a black owned rap label, gangster fucking rap label. She owns the original gangster rap label. Uh, she had to be a woman and take over a label called fucking Ruthless Records that the king act was NWA and easy motherfucking E. Those are shoes to fill, bro. Yeah. And outdid them. More records sold. That's phenomenal. Yeah. That's crazy. It was a, it was a great interview. Um, I am pumped. I am pumped on that. Uh, we got great interviews coming up. We still have, you know, other pieces from previous interviews that we haven't even released. We have new show ideas that we're we're getting ready to launch. Uh, we're about to send some of John's footage into syndication. Uh, so much going on at Beyond the Harmony, and we're we're just, I guess we're just two months in. Yep, yep. It's it's been a great journey so far, and we're just getting started. And we, it, and as I said earlier, we keep adding new features to the to the show, so it's amazing. It feels like we kicked the shit out of two months. Like, it doesn't feel like two months. We feel super established for a two-month run. Oh, yeah. But it's, <laughs> it feels like we've been doing it for, like, six months because we've been grinding definitely overtime. Uh, but every every single second of the blood, sweat, and tears has been a passion. And uh, it's all paid off because these answers we're getting, the closure we're getting, the riddles we're resolving. Yeah. And it's... This, this is tonight, this is priceless. Tonight was dope. Tonight was dope. That is your Beyond the Harmony Thug Thursday. Julio Costanzo, Cecil West, the one and only John Lippy. John, I, I think that's it. Is that it? That's it. And we'll see you next week. And we'll see you all week. So be on the lookout for Beyond the Harmony. Bring us out, Phoenix. We out of here. Beyond the harmony for the fans we celebrate. I'm the in the videos and the dust is so joy.